The 8000 series of TVs from Samsung have been a staple in the mid-range TV market for years. But how does the 2020 8000 series compare to last year's RU8000? We just bought the brand new Samsung TU8000, so in this video, we'll go over our test results and see if it's an upgrade over last year's model. Hey, I'm Nick. I'm a writer here at Ratings.com, where we help people find the best products for their needs. Remember to subscribe to our channel or check out our website to see hundreds of reviews on TVs, soundbars, and more. In this review, we'll start by looking at the design and inputs of the TU8000 and then move on to our test results for the picture quality. We'll also look at the motion handling, input lag, and sound. Throughout the video, we'll be comparing it to last year's RU8000. It's worth noting that Samsung has shifted their lineup a little, and this year's TU8000 succeeds the RU8000 in name only, and it's actually closer in performance to last year's RU7100, so we'll do some comparisons to that model as well. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the links in the description below. We bought the 55-inch TU8000, but it's also available in a wide range of sizes from 43 up to 75 inches. We expect these other sizes to have very similar picture quality and performance, but obviously as the sizes get bigger, you'll likely need a bigger table or a more durable wall mount. The design of the TU8000 is almost identical to this year's entry-level QLED, the Q60T, and looks slightly more premium than last year's RU8000, though the legs don't look quite as nice. The borders of this TV are very thin, and are quite a bit thinner than last year's RU8000. The wide-set legs support the TV well, and like some other Samsung TVs, they attach securely without the need for screws, which is nice and convenient. The controls of the TV are very similar to most recent Samsung TVs, and consist of a single button below the Samsung logo in the middle of the TV. Being as all controls from power to volume control or source input selection are within one button, you have to rely on a different series of short and long presses to activate different commands, which can be a bit confusing and difficult, so you'll probably want to make sure you keep your remote handy. If we move around to this side, the TV is thin and looks good. It sits close to the wall when wall mounted, which is nice. All of your inputs are on the rear of the TV, with some facing sideways and some facing straight back. Unlike last year's RU8000, which had only sideways facing inputs, making it easier to get to them if you wall mount your TV. There are two HDMI ports facing sideways and one facing straight back, giving you a total of three, which is one less than last year's model. On the sideways facing panel, you also have your tuner input and two USB ports. Facing backwards, you have your earlier mentioned third HDMI port, as well as your digital optical audio out, ethernet port, and unlike many newer TVs, Samsung included composite inputs this year, so you can plug in older devices, which is nice. As far as cable management, Samsung includes clips for the feet, similar to last year's model. While this is very simple, it's effective in helping root all your cables in one place. Now we'll move on to picture quality. As always, check out our website for an updated comparison with new TVs as we buy and test them. First up is contrast ratio. The contrast ratio is the relative brightness of white versus dark areas in a scene. It's generally considered one of the most important aspects of picture quality as a high contrast ratio helps dark scenes to appear more detailed without the details getting lost in the gray. Unlike the slightly higher end Q60T, the TU8000 doesn't have Samsung's new dual LED technology to help its contrast. That being said, the native contrast ratio of this TV is excellent and improved quite a bit over last year's RU8000. This helps its black uniformity perform exceptionally well, making this TV a great choice for watching movies in a dark room. Unfortunately, the TU8000 doesn't have local dimming to further improve the perceived contrast of real scenes. However, this is to be expected, as the RU8000 didn't have it either, and Samsung seems to reserve this feature for higher-end TVs. Now let's move on to gray uniformity. Our gray uniformity test checks for issues with the panel where different pixels are all supposed to display the exact same color, but may not. This can result in distracting areas known as dirty screen effect, which is especially noticeable when watching sports or playing video games. This is one aspect where this year's TU8000 performed significantly worse than last year's RU8000. The left and right edges of the screen are noticeably darker, and there is some visible dirty screen effect at the center which will likely be distracting during sports or panning shots. It's worth noting that gray uniformity is one of the aspects of the panel that can vary between units, so yours might perform differently. If you come across a panel that doesn't correspond to our results, let us know in the comments below. Now onto viewing angles. 
Having good viewing angles helps keep the image accurate when viewed from an angle, which can be important if you watch the TV with a large group of people or if your couch is positioned to the side of your TV. Like most TVs with a VA type panel, the viewing angles of the Q8000 are disappointing. At an angle, the black level raises quickly and the image looks washed out. While it performs slightly better than last year's model, it's still not very good overall. If your TV's in a bright room, good reflection handling is important to cut out the amount of glare. The Q8000's reflection handling is about typical of most mid-range TVs. Its semi-gloss finish helps diffuse reflections a bit across the screen, though overall it's only decent and may struggle in moderately well-lit rooms. It'll likely be hard to see the image in a bright room or with direct glare from a window, especially since its SDR peak brightness is only decent. SDR peak brightness refers to how bright your screen can get when watching most standard non-HDR content. A brighter screen will help your TV overcome reflections and glare, but unfortunately this screen can't get very bright and is overall quite a bit dimmer than last year's RU8000. There's no local dimming, so the brightness doesn't really change with most window sizes, but the TV does have CE dimming, also known as frame dimming, which dims the whole screen during dark scenes. Unfortunately, this can crush some details and it can't be disabled. If you watch HDR content, then the ability to produce bright regions of the image is important to produce impactful highlight detail and help make the image pop. Unfortunately, while the TU8000 supports HDR, it's very dim with HDR content and can't produce bright specular highlights. It performs even worse than last year's RU8000, and at below 300 nits, HDR content really won't stand out. Also important for HDR is the ability to take advantage of the more saturated colors that are possible in HDR due to the wider mastering color space. Unfortunately, the T8000 doesn't have a very wide color gamut at all, and again, is quite a bit worse in this regard versus last year's RU8000. Overall, this TV isn't the best choice if you watch a lot of HDR movies or TV shows from your favorite streaming service, or play HDR-capable games from an Xbox One X or PS4 Pro. Speaking of games, how's the motion handling of this TV? Well, unlike last year's RU8000, which had a 120Hz panel, all sizes of the TU8000 have a 60Hz panel. We'll talk about the effect of this a little bit more later on in the video. First up for motion is response time. Response time is an average of the time it takes for the TV to transition from one color to the next. The TU8000 has a great response time, but again, it doesn't perform as well as last year's RU8000, and there's a bit of blur behind fast-moving objects, though overall it may not be noticeable to everyone. The backlight of the TV flickers at 600 Hz, which is at such a high frequency that it isn't noticeable to most people and can't be seen in our moving logo photo. However, like this year's Q60T, we found that on a full screen single uniform color, it causes a kind of strange rolling effect. To help reduce motion blur, the T8000 has an optional black frame insertion feature. The flicker of the backlight can also be adjusted for those who want a clearer image. This can be enabled by selecting the LED clear motion setting in movie mode. This results in a clear image with less persistent blur, though it's not as good as you can find on some other TVs, as you can see some duplication of the image, and it also darkens the screen a fair amount. Unfortunately, like with both the RU7100 and this year's Q60T, the LED clear motion doesn't work in game mode for low input lag. When in game mode, the backlight flickers at 120Hz, and enabling LED clear motion doesn't adjust this, so more duplication is noticeable and the image is less clear. This may be fixed with a future firmware update though. Now on to input lag. When using this TV in game mode, it reduces the input lag of the TV, and for most signals, it's under 10 milliseconds, which is close to the theoretical minimum at 60 hertz. This is actually an improvement over last year's RU8000, and is great for fast-paced games as it feels very responsive. Unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, this year's model only has a 60 hertz panel, so it can't display a 120 hertz signal in game mode, which is disappointing. Also, unlike last year's RU8000, this TV no longer supports variable refresh rates. This is a huge downgrade if you game with an Xbox One X with VRR or from a PC, and it's a shame that they excluded this from both this TV as well as this year's Q60T. Now for smart features. Like all Samsung smart TVs, the T8000 uses Samsung's own Tizen OS, although the 2020 version has a slightly simpler interface with no animations and a new dark mode instead of the white background. Overall, it's similar to previous Samsung smart TVs and is easier to use. The remote is also the same as Samsung has used for the past few years with the 8000 lineup and is small and straightforward to use. It still includes the quick launch buttons that Samsung included on the RU8000's remote, which allows you to quickly open Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Samsung TV+.
At this point, you're probably asking yourself, but Nick, how do the speakers sound? Well, if you guessed about the same as most TVs, then you'd be right. The speakers have a decent frequency response and can get fairly loud, but as is expected, they're lacking in bass. For better and clearer sound, it's always best to go with a dedicated sound system or even a sound bar. Overall, the T8000 is a good TV that's decent for most uses, though unfortunately it's a bit of a downgrade over last year's RU8000. It performs closer to the RU7100, especially in regards to HDR and gaming performance. Though this seems to be becoming the norm, as each year the 8000 series seems to perform a bit worse than the 8000 of the year before. Keep this in mind when looking for a new TV, as even this year's Q60T, which is one model up over the TU8000, performs slightly worse than last year's RU8000 overall. So that's it! What do you think of the 2020 Samsung TU8000? Is it worth the upgrade over last year's model? Or have we reached the point where we should be looking to Samsung's QLED line when looking for a solid mid-range TV? You can check out all the measurements on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on our website to access all our latest results first. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.